Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of cloud computing. Today, my guests are from Scaleout Software. We have Bill Bain, he's the CEO and founder of the company, and Dave Brinker, who's the COO. So, gentlemen, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Rich. Thank you, Rich. This is Bill Bain, and I'm joined by Dave Brinker today, and we'll be talking to you about in-memory data grids. So, Scaleout Software develops in-memory data grid products. Our company was founded in 2003, and we are in Bellevue, Washington, and Beaverton, Oregon. I came out of Microsoft, and before that, three startup companies. I uh, developed a technology uh, called network load balancing, which uh, Microsoft acquired and put in Windows Server. Dave comes from Venture Graphics, WebBridge, and other companies in the Portland area, has been a CEO of many companies that are venture funded. We have seven years market experience in Windows and Linux with our in-memory grid products. So now I'm going to go to slide number three and tell you why we care about scaling application performance. And this is pretty simple, actually. It's to allow applications to keep up with fast-growing workloads and thereby to maintain fast response time for their customers. And, of course, we know that high performance means competitiveness for an application. So two examples would be, first, a web server farm that has to scale performance to handle more and more web users and thereby be responsive to its customers and not uh, create delays in responding to web requests. Another example would be in financial services and analyzing data. And we know that having near real-time performance in analyzing data is important for an application to be competitive and to allow it to respond to the market quickly. So let's go to slide number four and talk about the principal technique that people have used to scale performance, and that's called scaling out, and that's why we call companies scale out software. Scaling out is the technique by which you add servers uh, to a uh, to a server farm or in the cloud so that you can increase the performance of an application. Now, when you add servers, you now have the opportunity to take advantage of lots of CPUs, memory, and storage. And these are problems that people have worked on for over 20 or 30 years. And we know that uh, there are techniques for harnessing all the CPUs so that you can scale the performance of an application. And we've seen recently the emergence of NoSQL stores, uh, file stores and databases, which allow you to scale storage. Our focus with in-memory data grids is, as you might imagine, with scaling memory access. And the goal here is to allow data that's being uh, stored by the CPUs to be shared across all of the servers uniformly, so to create shareability for data, and to do so in a way that allows performance scaling without bottlenecks. And also, built into this has to be a technique called high availability, so that the data and the access to data survives even if one or more of the servers goes down. And it's very important for enterprise applications. So let's talk about two cases in which we've seen in-memory data grid used. We can see the use of an in-memory data grid in a web server farm. And this is why I actually first identified the need for this technology. So let's say that you have a load server sending requests in, web requests in, to a web server farm shown at the top here. And then you also have perhaps an application server farm executing business logic at the bottom of the drawing here on the right. So we could see that without the use of an in-memory data grid, a database server, uh, even a cluster database server as shown here, could become a bottleneck, uh, both in terms of uh, increasing its latency because it's being overused, and also by making use of a resource that's really designed to hold persistent data, line of business data that's to be stored for long periods of time. In-memory data grids are used for storing fast-changing data or data that's repeatedly accessed and data that can be offloaded from the database server and moved into memory on the servers within the server farms themselves. So here's the use of an in-memory data grid to scale application performance by bringing the data closer to where it's needed and making sure that its access is scalable and, uh, and the response times are fast. Now going to slide six, you can see another application that's quickly emerging for in-memory data grids, and that's to use them in the cloud. So you might see a social media app or a mobile app that's handling hundreds of thousands of users that's being hosted in the cloud as a pool of application uh, virtual servers or AMIs and Amazon that are running in the cloud. Now, an in-memory data grid can run as another set of virtual servers that work together with the application to hold data, make sure that it's uh, shareable across the application's virtual servers, and ensure that the storage and accessibility scales as the application scales to handle more users. And by doing so, it's offloading cloud-based storage. So it's allowing the application to scale, and it's not using uh, a long-term storage resource for that purpose. So let's drill down a little bit with the next slide, which would be slide seven, and talk about what exactly an in-memory data grid is. So an in-memory data grid really is a new level in, a, in the vertical storage hierarchy or a new vertical storage tier. 
and it's in memory data that's out of process with uh, the application. So you can see it down at the fourth level down just above backing storage. So it's providing this ability to store data in memory and not in backing store, but still have memory access speeds and thereby boosting performance by bringing the data closer to the application. In fact, most memory data grids incorporate a technique called client-side caching. And client-side caching allows the application to have even faster access to data, as we'll see in the next slide. Now, the second key aspect of in-memory data grids is they scale. So now you can have multiple servers, each hosting a portion of the in-memory data grid. And that they, these uh, servers work together to form a scalable uh, storage repository, memory-based, that scales both capacity and performance and also adds high availability by using redundant storage of data in an intelligent way so that you maintain scalability, but you avoid data loss if a server goes down. Now this technology is sometimes called a distributed cache or distributed data grid, but I think the term in-memory data grid has emerged as the most popular term in the industry today. Now, one other point I want to make is that this technology runs as software. It's not a hardware technology. It's a software technology that runs on the servers, usually as a service process or in Linux as a daemon. And so these service processes cooperate across the network to create the in-memory data grid. So it's middleware software is the, what this technology uh, is implemented in. Now let's go to slide number eight, which talks about the top benefits of having in-memory data grids. And let me draw your attention to the graph at the bottom right. So this graph is showing us, it's a little bit complicated, but it makes sense once you look at it. Um, it's showing access latency on the vertical axis and throughput on the horizontal axis. So it's showing you how a storage repository would perform as more load is added to it. So as load is added, you would move from left to right, and you can see that uh, this throughput will grow and the access latency might or might not grow. So let's compare now a database server to an in-memory data grid. First of all, on the bottom left, you can see that in-memory data grids are faster than database servers um, because they're storing data in memory and they also incorporate client-side caching. We have measured something like a 6x improvement in latency, a reduction in latency, by using an in-memory data grid. It's avoiding network transfer times, avoiding deserialization times, and in general providing much faster access to data. Now the other key char characteristic of the in-memory data grid is that it's scaling its throughput as workload is increased. So, and that's accomplished by adding servers to the grid. Now as you can see, by moving along the x-axis, the grid, which is shown in the blue line, is maintaining very low access latency as its throughput is growing and its throughput just grows uniformly uh, as load is added. Now look at a database server. What you can see is the latency suddenly goes up when it hits its throughput barrier. So there's a, there's a point at which a fixed resource like a database server will increase its throughput, um, will increase its latency as its throughput hits a wall. And that lack of scalability is the key aspect that the uh, in-memory data grid adds by, uh, by avoiding that bottleneck and allowing throughput to scale. Now, in addition to these characteristics, <clears throat> the in-memory data grid is providing uniform access to data, shareable access across the entire server farm, and that's really important because if that's not provided by the grid, then it has to be provided by other more complex techniques, like which you might have seen in HPC, such as message passing. And so using a grid avoids the need for making the application complex by adding other techniques for sharing data. <clears throat> now, two other aspects of <clears throat> in-memory data grids are, first of all, very fast data analysis. So you can take the data that's being stored in the grid and analyze it in place and deliver very fast, near real-time performance in mining the data, analyzing the data using a technique called MapReduce. And we'll look at that in a few minutes and talk about that. Um, lastly, the grids give you this ability to combine different in-memory data grids at multiple sites into one virtual grid that spans the globe so you can now access data, fast changing data, uniformly across a wide area network without regard to which city or site in which it's located. Now I'm going to go to slide number nine and tell you about our products before I turn it over to Dave Brinker who will tell you about the market for this technology. So we have three key products in our company. Our first is our flagship product called Scale-Out State Server, which is in-memory data grid middleware that's available for both Windows and Linux. 
Uh, as I say, we've been in the market for over seven years, and uh, we provide very fast performance and also I would consider industry-leading ease of use. One of the areas in which we have focused with our technology is making this kind of uh, technology very easy to deploy and to use without requiring users to understand all, all the details of the plumbing, if you will, of an in-memory data grid. Uh, we have a high-end version of the product called Scale Out Grid Computing Edition, which adds this MapReduce capability for parallel data analysis, in addition to some uh, management tools which are very useful in application development, such as an object browser. Uh, lastly, we have a product called ScaleOut GeoServer, which complements ScaleOut State Server by adding the ability to do WAN-based data replication for uh, uh, disaster recovery. And also, <clears throat> we have just introduced with version 5, <clears throat> pardon me, the ability to access data uniformly across wide area networks. So now let me turn it over to Dave with slide 10 to talk about the market. Dave. Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, as Bill just mentioned, we've been in this market for a little over seven years now. Uh, and in that time, these two main segments that you see in the pie chart here uh, have emerged for us. Uh, the red area represents what we call enterprise applications. So these are customer-facing or back-office uh, web-based apps that are running on server farms, and they need to sit, uh, scale their performance to handle uh, increasing workloads. Uh, the blue area that you see on the right uh, represents HPC and grid computing. So we provide two kinds of solutions for this segment of the market. Uh, first, for uh, traditional parallel computing apps running on compute grids, uh, we provide in-memory data storage to speed up performance uh, by reducing data access time. Uh, the second solution that we provide in this segment is our in-memory map reduced middleware uh, for near real-time data analytics. So we have traction in uh, both of these segments uh, in our business, but uh, we're seeing very, very strong interest at this point uh, in the analytics market. Uh, so this, this slide shows a good selection of customers uh, and use cases in some of the vertical markets uh, where we participate. It's a pretty good snapshot of the main areas that we serve and the types of applications on which we're deployed. Uh, you can see here there's a wide range of apps and vertical industries that make use of our products. Uh, essentially, any application that needs to scale its performance or analyze data can potentially use a scale-out product. Uh, the use cases that are shown in italics on the right-hand side are the ones uh, that, uh, where we're used for data analysis. And as I mentioned before, uh, that's a very strong area uh, of interest and growth for us in our business uh, at this point. Historically, uh, we've offered our software licenses uh, as perpetual licenses for a one-time license fee plus annual support and maintenance. Uh, we've recently added subscription-based pricing and usage-based pricing since we're now available in public clouds and those licensing models uh, are quite common there. So there's a lot of flexibility in the way you can license a scale-out product. Uh, you can see the approximate prices uh, for our main products in the table. Uh, in general, our pricing is very aggressive uh, when you compare it to other commercial solutions. Uh, support uh, is done primarily via email and, and phone. Uh, you know, the fact that our products are very easy to use is certainly a, a strong selling point for us, but it also means that customers are generally able to be successful uh, on their own without a lot of support uh, from us. Um, on this slide, you can see some summary data about our customers. Uh, we have over 350 unique customers, and more than half of those customers have multiple deployments of our product. Uh, in some of our larger customers, we're running on as many as 10 or 15 uh, individual server farms and across, uh, in, sometimes, uh, uh, in some cases, hundreds of applications. Uh, as you can see from the pie chart, financial services and e-commerce are important verticals for us. Uh, those verticals have a strong need for performance scaling uh, to meet heavy workloads, so we've had a lot of success uh, in those market segments. Uh, but we are you know, spread across many, many verticals, as you can see. Uh, you can get a sense of the usage profile on the right-hand table. I won't go through it in detail, but uh, a typical customer uh, tends to run us on six to ten servers, uh, but we have deployments that are, uh, that are much larger than that. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it back over to Bill uh, to talk more about our products. Okay, this is Bill again, and I'm on slide 14 now, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the use of this technology for mining data. First, let me point out that the use of in-memory data grids has rapidly evolved since we introduced our product in 2005. 
initially it was used for session state storage and then application caching, and then over time it's moved into parallel data analysis, first in financial services and now more broadly. Also, we're seeing cloud-based deployment, and we believe that cloud-based deployments for analysis will be very popular because of the elasticity that the cloud offers. Uh, we could see some of the key advantages of using in-memory data grids for data analysis. And the, the, there are two or three main advantages. One is that it's automatic parallelism. So you can very easily write an application uh, that's in an object-oriented manner with a very easy-to-use development model that will automatically take advantage of many servers and cores to deliver parallel analysis performance. And so at the bottom right here, we show the results of some analysis we did uh, in a financial services application and show with the red line here the linear scalability we could generate by keeping the data in memory and, uh, and minimizing data motion. So uh, in, aside from being just an easy-to-use platform, it also is a very powerful and fast platform delivering near real-time performance, and that's because it's avoiding data motion. And we'll see that in this example that I'll show you in just a second. Our technique for doing parallel data analysis in the MapReduce style is called parallel method invocation. And I'll give you an example of that in the next slide. First, let me point out with slide 16 that a large percentage of data sets will actually fit into memory. Uh, that's because 60% uh, of all analytic data sets are about 10 terabytes or less. And because of that, we find that many useful data sets can be analyzed in memory with an in-memory data grid and do not require the use of a NoSQL store or a database server to hold the data and, or a parallel file system to hold the data and to have the data be staged in the memory for analysis, which costs performance. So here's a very quick example starting in slide 17 of analyzing data using an in-memory data grid. What we're doing here is we're analyzing what are called stock trading strategies across a set of stock histories. So this is a technique that financial analysts use in order to develop new trading strategies and provide first-to-market advantage and high performance in their trading uh, strategy. They do this by divining, defining, or divining a new trading strategy and then testing it against the history of stock prices for a set of stock symbols. So here's how technically you would actually go about doing that. First of all, you could write a method, an object-oriented method, let's call it E, the bold E here shown um, in this chart, slide 17, that would analyze a trading strategy across a single stock history, say the stock history for IBM over the last 10 years, uh, looking at the opening and closing price for that stock over that period. You could also write a second object-oriented method called M to merge the results of analyzing two stock symbols, say IBM and AT&T. So then the next step would then just be to populate the grid with a large set of stock histories, thousands of stock histories, uh, each stored as a separate object, and then run this analysis in parallel so you can run the E method in parallel and also you can do the merging in parallel. And this technique is what is popularly called MapReduce, and this is one implementation of MapReduce. So if we look at the next slide, which is 18, we can see that we would populate the grid with these uh, blue or purplish uh, objects here, each of which represents the history of stock prices for a given symbol. So you might have hundreds of thousands of these objects in the grid that you're going to analyze in parallel. Now go to slide 19 and you can see that we would have two object-oriented methods, one for evaluating a stock history and one for merging the results. Now notice that these, are, uh, these methods are in-memory methods. They don't make explicit use of the grid. They simply are looking at uh, a given instance of a class, in particular the stock history class, analyzing the trading strategy across that history and producing some results. And the merge method is just merging two sets of results, say uh, combining them or averaging them, whatever. And then the next step is simply to run the analysis in parallel. And this is done, shown here with pseudocode, uh, by just invoking with our parallel method invocation technique, just invoking these two methods, the eval and the merge methods, uh, with a, over a queried set of objects. Now, we're not showing the details of the query specification here, but you can imagine that it would be a straightforward query spec that would select the stock uh, ticker symbols of interest. For example, all of the stocks whose market cap is greater than $100 million, as an example. So in parallel, the in-memory data grid will send out the, the eval and the merge methods, run them in parallel across these stock uh, ticker symbols, combine the results, and return the results in memory to the user. And this can be done with very low latency and very uh, scalable performance. And the key to that is shown in slide 21. 
So slide 21 shows how we're minimizing data motion. And the reason is, instead of moving all of the data into memory, as shown at the top of this diagram, we're, you, we're analyzing the data in place on the queried set of objects that are already resident in the in-memory data grid servers. This is the key to very fast performance. So if you go to slide 22, we did some comparisons with Hadoop. Hadoop is a popular MapReduce platform that uses a file-based parallel file system to hold the data for analysis. This was done last November, and as you know, Hadoop is continuously uh, evolving as is uh, our uh, parallel method invocation. So this represents a snapshot in performance that we measured last November. What we see in the red line at the top is that Scale-Out State Server is providing, uh, with its in-memory data grid, about a 16x improvement in performance over the use of pure Hadoop. And the reason is almost purely the use of uh, of the avoidance of data motion by the use of the grid's memory-based storage. Now, we did some other testing uh, by where we reheld the data in memory and analyzed it with Hadoop, and we could get about a 6x performance improvement. But this technique of parallel method invocation combined with memory-based storage is both simple and, as we can see, much faster than some alternative techniques. And by the way, it's uh, possible to do this both in Java or in C-sharp uh, for .NET. Now lastly, let me just touch on a couple of things uh, that we see that are valuable for in-memory data grids. One is this ability to do global data access. And so with an in-memory data grid, you can have grids at multiple sites, combine them into a virtual grid, and then just remotely access data or synchronize reads and updates to data across a wide area network and efficiently manage the WAN band bandwidth when doing so. So this really opens up the opportunity to have applications span multiple sites and seamlessly access fa fast changing data. Now going to slide 24, we can see that it's really straightforward to deploy an in-memory data grid in the cloud as one of those sites that we might be accessing data from, and also uh, one of those sites to which we might migrate our data for execution if we're doing cloud bursting. So the way this could be accomplished is simply by deploying the grid from an on-premise management workstation and then having the cloud application seamlessly access the grid servers within the cloud without having to know exactly which virtual servers are hosting the grid. So these two capabilities, the automatic deployment and then the automatic access to the grid servers are two um, key capabilities that are required and they're provided by Scale-Out State Server when deploying into public clouds. So let me wrap up with slide 25 and say the key advantages of using this technology called in-memory data grids are that they provide fast access to data. And by providing fast access to data, they allow applications to scale their throughput so that they can meet growing workloads and harness the resources of multiple servers, either in a server farm or in the cloud, to do so. And baked into this technology is high availability to avoid data loss if a server fails. And also, this technology is simplifying applications by both providing shared access to data and by allowing data to be easily analyzed in an object-oriented manner with very high performance and very low latency. And lastly, this technology can be expanded to be scalable across the cloud and multiple sites using global data access and cloud-based deployment. So with that, Rich, I think we've wrapped up. So thank you very much. Well, great, great. Hey, thanks for that, guys. A couple questions here about the technology. Uh, do I have to change my application? Will this run something that's like off the shelf, or do I have to write code for this type of environment? Well, that's a great question. This is Bill. Um, so that's a great question, and uh, and the answers are yes and no. So. Um, there are cases in which you do not have to change the code. In particular, for environments in which the grid can be plugged seamlessly in underneath the application's uh, usage. So for example, in the Windows environment for session state access, uh, there, uh, Windows provides a what's called a provider model and allows grids, uh, third parties to with in-memory data grids to plug in and to seamlessly hold session state. There are other examples with Hibernate and in-Hibernate in which we can plug in as a second level distributed cache for those environments and be essentially invisible to the application. But the dominant usage model of this uh, technology is API based. And the APIs are very simple. They're like file system APIs, but simpler. Uh, they're, they're, they're called CRUD, C-R-U-D, for create, read, update, and delete. And so uh, when in an object-oriented fashion, data can be added and updated, read, and deleted from the grid with these four APIs. 
Now, as we saw with parallel data analysis, it's possible to do an entire analysis without actually using these APIs, except for the one called Invoke in, to, in order to start the analysis. But the heavy lifting in the application code can be written in such a manner that it's unaware of the in-memory data grid. When you guys engage with, with, with customers, are they typically already doing some kind of a Hadoop solution and you show them a way that they can accelerate it using this grid? Uh, Dave, do you want to take that one? <laughs> sure. Uh, there's a wide variety um, of, uh, of use cases. So um, certainly, uh, you know, most customers are wanting to scale their performance uh, in some way or another. And they're either moving off of a database-based uh, solution for storing data that applications need, um, or they've built their own, um, you know, in-house, uh, and they just need to have more uh, more of the features, uh, advanced features and capabilities in, of a commercial product uh, that we offer. So it, it's really, there's no easy answer to that question. Um, it, it, uh, in general, there's a lot of different motivations uh, that uh, the customers uh, use to, to move to our product. But we do, I would say that we see um, a lot of companies coming to us for the advanced features uh, that we offer, such as uh, data analysis. Uh, the global data integration that Bill touched on and, and others. So, uh, uh, guys, as, as we see more, more and more cores come online, right, those require servers to have more and more memory. Does that play well into your strategy? Will you continue to be able to scale a, as these servers uh, grow and triple and quadruple in, in memory size? Uh, this is Bill. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, that's one of the strengths of this technology is that it can harness the cores and the servers automatically when doing analysis and for do doing data storage so that you all you have to do is add more servers and the more powerful the servers, the better. Uh, lots of memory is great. Fast networking is great. And uh, many cores are great. So um, the technology scales uh, uniformly. It's designed to avoid bottlenecks to scaling uh, by being designed in, in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion that scales as you add servers uh, without bottlenecks. Well, great. Well, kind of a wrap-up question here, guys. I mean, if, if our audience has their ears perked up, they think they might have a, a, some interesting technology for them, how do they engage with your company? Is it through the, the um, application providers, or do you go direct? Or how does it work? Uh, yeah, this is Dave. So we have a uh, direct uh, sales model. Uh, so if anyone is interested, uh, they can just go to our website, which is, of course, www.scaleoutsoftware.com. Uh, and uh, download an evaluation copy uh, of the product. There's a free uh, eval offered on the site. Uh, we'll be glad to support that evaluation uh, across multiple servers. The, uh, the interested person has to contact us to get a, uh, a license key for multiple servers. We're happy to, happy to provide that. Uh, and then we just, um, we just go from there. As I, as I mentioned, the ease of use is, uh, is one of the real strengths of this product. And, and so generally people can evaluate it um, uh, pretty successfully in a very short amount of time. Well, terrific. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Thank you very much, Rich. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Rich. You bet. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of cloud computing.